think I got about a thousand pounds in the end, like off basically free money. I was sitting there on their own in their bedrooms in 2000, 2001. By 2005, they're driving around in Range Rovers. It's almost risk-free for the brand uh, in terms of setting something up. We could see this iceberg right in front of us. Everyone had the same thoughts, you know, we, we've got to shut this down. I call them the fluffy metrics, right? That's the fluffy stuff. Today on The Engaging Marketeer, I'm speaking with somebody I first met back in 2000 uh, when we both worked at Electronics Boutique in the UK, down in Bracknell in Berkshire. Uh, Electronics Boutique that then became Game, as you will probably know. Uh, I'm speaking with Anthony Quinn, or Quinny, as we called him in the office. Uh, Anthony was responsible for setting up the affiliate scheme at Game back in 2000, which became his baby, something that he developed and evolved over the years while he was there. Anthony now co-runs a company in Thailand specifically for affiliates within Southeast Asia and works for some huge brands on helping them grow their marketplace across the region. So I'm going to be speaking to Anthony about how affiliate marketing has changed over the years, what it was like back in the early days of affiliate marketing when it was complete cowboy era, and how it's working now and how both big brands and small brands alike can use affiliate marketing to help grow their business. Tony, I've, I've, yes. I've, not, I, I've not seen you for... I. I I think we met in 2000. Yep, back, that's back when at, I started also. Yeah. When you started Electronics Boutique, uh, game, as it as it became. Yep. I, I think we met briefly some years after that at a, an affiliate marketing conference in, I think it was London, Earl's Court or Excel or something. I'm yep. not entirely sure what, what was going on there. I was probably a bit drunk. <laughs> um, but tell me, how, how did you get into the industry at game? What was your first experience getting in there? So that was actually my first that was my first job out of university. If you remember remember Brian Fitzpatrick. So uh, Brian, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um he brought me on board initially as as a marketing analyst. And to be honest, I wasn't really sure what I was going to be doing, right? Fresh out of university, I did a marketing and psychology degree and kind of just thinking, right, this is the wide world, this is my first job. Uh let's see what happens. Um so it was a kind of the marketing analyst role, which didn't, it, it evolved very quickly, should I say, within like three to six mm. months, suddenly it's like, can you handle the AOL and MSN tenancy placement deals that were that were very funny in that time in terms of the amount of money that was spent and so little return? Uh, massive amounts the deal was of money, spent. wasn't it? Massive <laughs> amounts of money being spent for some banner advertising, <laughs> effectively. Yeah, uh, it, it was just all banners. It was like, have you got new banners for us this week and we're just going to put them on our homepage and run off site that was another that was another ROS thing uh, abbreviation that I learned pretty quickly but yeah so so it was that and then obviously the websites were pretty new um, and at that time they've been outsourced uh, to a third party company so it wasn't much we could do so I think was it within within a couple of years I, I think um, the guys brought a development team in house in there yeah. and then and then re rejigged the whole site I think that was when kind of merged into game as a brand, a, a standalone brand, and EB kind of went away. Um, yeah. But that's really, that was probably like, that was the first kind of pivot for me because I don't I remember Brian was really keen on affiliate marketing. I was like, what is this affiliate marketing? He's like, yeah, it's going to be big. It's, you know, it's all about partnerships, you know, it's a way to drive traffic and sales. Um, you know, let's let's give it a go. So we signed up initially with an, an American company that just came over to the UK. Um, very nice offices in Windsor, um, but but in terms of the platform and the usability, well, it, really, it wasn't, I, I wasn't. I didn't get to go to their offices in Windsor. You went there, did you? Yeah, they were. It was a company called B Three, um, and then they got acquired yeah. by another company called Commission Junction, uh, and just disappeared quite quickly. <laughs> so we tried that for a year or so. Um, and and the thing is, when you're when you're launching an affiliate program as a brand or a company as big as a big as game, right? You know, big UK UK brand. You need you need access to distributions. You need to have access to partners quickly to come on board, because otherwise you're trying to get partnership externally, and it's a longer process. B three didn't have that, so we closed that pretty quickly. And uh, then I that that was when I really started researching affiliate marketing, right? You know. What what other solutions are out there? What type of partners can we work with? 
uh, and then we ended up with a, a network called Trade Doubler. So I, I guess, I guess my first proper foray into affiliate marketing was when we launched on the Trade Doubler, and they were one of the biggest affiliate networks in the UK at the time. I've had big old clients, had a massive publisher base, um, but it was quite fresh uh, into the industry. So I didn't really know what partnerships look like. But what I did know, and, and this becomes really important actually um, it, for the future and where we are now, because uh, all I need, all, all I knew at that time was I needed to brand it as something good and special. So um, you may have helped me with this. I don't know. I can't remember. But we built we built a I'll landing page for it. I'll take credit for it. I'll take credit for it. Yeah, I'll give you some credit anyway because there was some artwork and stuff. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we we launched. Well, I basically branded it as the get into game partnership program which i thought was pretty pretty cool as a name um even though it was it was all about affiliate marketing right um and actually in that time i learned pretty quickly about the good affiliate marketing and the bad affiliate marketing because what was happening at that time was there, a lot, there was a lot of some of the not so nice stuff happening like the pop unders cookie stuffing all that stuff mm -hmm. ways in which partners can get commission through um through more uh, unethical <laughs> means, right? Um, and then there was there was this other thing happening as, as well that the brands didn't know about until later on, and that was that was PPC, right? So that was the ability to bid on a brand term and drive traffic um, to to the website. At that time, many many brands weren't using weren't weren't utilizing Google and didn't really know how to do it, and uh, on a PPC kind of channel level. But the publishers did, and they learned very quickly uh, how to do it and took advantage of it. And basically, they would be bidding on on the brand terms. Um, they'd be paying for the click. Um, mm. But in essence, it was highly, uh, highly motivated buyers right, or customers that were searching for the brand and then going to the site and making a purchase. So the conversion it was rate of these... Search, was, high search intent, wasn't there, yeah? Of course, you know, you're searching for the brand. It probably means you want to buy something there, right? Yeah. Um, so, so they were receiving a commission on all the sales that have been generated, generated, which uh, by far was much, much higher in terms of the amount they earned com compared to how much they paid in the click fees, which were probably really low because it's very uncompetitive in that time. So um, eventually we, 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 we learned about that and, you know, we, we saw some affiliates you know that were sitting there on their own in their bedrooms in 2000 2001 by 2005 they're driving around in range rovers and <laughs> and uh, all sorts of all sorts of stuff because they just made made it rich um so well, by when, by when 2000 you say made, sorry Tom, when you, when you say making it rich what what sort of commissions were affiliates earning there like on a monthly or annual basis it was it was easily in the thousands easily right so if you think about um some brands or, or sorry some verticals that uh, people come on board very easily to use online. Finance, travel, right? They're the two main ones. Yeah. You know, um, that that took to online very, very quickly and, and people were very, very comfortable booking travel and, and looking at finance, credit and all the, all the rest of it online because it was kind of like a, a real quick evolution of what they were doing on the phone. So, um, so the amount of volume that was going through these websites and the amount of the, the the brand activity that's happening yeah they they were absolutely milking it and then the brands eventually learned hold on we should be doing this ourselves yeah. we shouldn't be we should we should be paying five ten fifteen percent per sale when we could be paying the equivalent of 0.3 percent on a click so uh so so that all all, all that evolution of affiliate marketing started happening just before i, I left game because i was there until 2005 um so that's kind of a, a bit of a long-winded explanation on on it comes to what i'm doing now right but that was that was kind of an important part of my role at game was affiliate marketing alongside um uh some of the some of the cpc comparison uh partnerships that we had we obviously had to manage the site as well there was a lot of stuff going on uh in terms of all the 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 hardware and the software that we had to promote in different areas and we had to try and replicate the sponsorship opportunities or the marketing paid opportunities that likes of EA, Microsoft, Sony, etc., could, um, could 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 get involved in and maybe pay for some placement across the site as well, like they did in the stores. So uh, kind of had to build that up as well.
Mm, so like, it's actually quite like, a, like, the, like the role. charts, Anthony. The game charts, which were one hundred percent based on sales, weren't they? So, so you talk about sales, yeah. That's that's one thing. <laughs> of course, they were or were yeah. not. Who totally knows? on sale. Uh, yeah, that, nobody <laughs> paid for number one ranking in the charts, did they, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> but talking of charts, actually, um, it, it was really interesting for as a learning, like a tech learning piece for me on using the affiliate marketing channel because when we bought, you obviously remember Tony, who was leading up the dev team for Tony the website. Holman, yeah. Who, who when he built yeah. the Marks and Spencer's website a while back, I recall. Yeah, yeah, but he he was amazing in terms of like if I came up with a marketing idea, he could he could work it out on a tech mm. on a tech level. So we we did we were doing things I didn't even realize at the time, or I didn't I didn't really think how how forward thinking it was really because I was just doing my job. But we were doing we were doing things that were miles ahead of anyone else that was doing stuff. Obviously, remember the 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 ticker promotions that we were doing on the site right with the limited stock live tickers and things like that but yeah, for the affiliate yeah. channel yeah for the affiliate channel what we were able to do was to do these dynamic top 10 charts right per, per format so like maybe a playstation 2 top 10 and what would happen is if if an affiliate plugged in a bit of code on their website in in a in a module uh like you know a standard banner size when that page loaded it would it would go to it would go to the game website, uh, it would work out, it would get the charts, so it would feed back into Trade Double, I think, I can't remember the exact thing. Um, insert all the tracking links so that they got credited for any clicks and then and then populate that that module with with live chart info. So it was all dynamic. So we never had to tell affiliates what the top ten was gonna be for this week because we, we had it dynamically go. No one else was doing that. No one else was doing that. So that was really cool. Um so anyway, there was loads of stuff. Uh, going on, I was there for five years, but kind of out of all out of all the channels and the tasks that I was doing at Game, that was probably the main channel that I thought, hold on, this is this is pretty good stuff. Um, so uh, that, that was yeah, I much, mean that was that was your baby, wasn't it? You were pretty much in charge of the affiliate scheme on your yeah. own. Yeah, yeah, and it was it, it ended up ended up driving about ten fifteen percent of the total e commerce sales, right? Was it that um, high? Which is which is uh, which was high at that at that time, yeah. Oh. Uh, so it was good. It was really good. Um, I, I I don't know whether do, do I need to explain affiliate marketing maybe in terms of how it works yeah, as a go channel. On, go on, actually, yeah, go on. Explain affiliate marketing because there's probably yeah, people I, listening to this who are business owners who are thinking, "What the yeah. hell is affiliate marketing? Isn't that something I can do in my spare time?" <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> I've, I've just got off on a tangent work? talking. No, about how can it work to promote a business? How could a business use affiliate marketing to build themselves up? Yeah, so 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 essentially, affiliate marketing is 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 all about partnering with um, with uh, a website or an app or someone someone that someone that has the ability to promote a brand or a service, uh, usually online, right? Um, and they will promote that brand or that service, uh, and um, anyone that basically clicks from there website whether it's a bit of content whether they're promoting an offer that the brands are running anyone that, that clicks through and makes a purchase they receive a commission on the sale all right so you've got all these different ways of working with different channels so obviously with google it's a pay-per-click right so you you bid on how much you want to pay when someone clicks on the link with affiliate marketing you only pay when an actual sale happens so it's a really uh, it's it's almost risk-free for the brand uh, in terms of setting something up, because they're only going to pay commission when a sale happens. And 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 the other really key point with the affiliate channel is that you get to control the ROI from the beginning, right? So when you when you think nowadays with you know Google and Facebook as examples of channels, you typically have a budget, right? So you put that budget in, you optimize the budget as much as you can. But as soon as that's finished, everything's turned off, right? Mm. And that's it. With affiliate marketing. Um, you get to set how much money you want to pay for a sale, right? So you say, okay, well, I'm, I'm willing to pay 10% uh, for that sale. So from the outset, you already know, you already know your margins and the cost of sale from the beginning. Um, so it's, it's, a re it's a really powerful channel for, uh, for being able to control your spend um, and, and build up partnerships. Because at the same time, 
Um, the other point, actually, in comparison to the other channels, is that it's kind of an always-on channel. So, as soon as you get someone promoting your 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 brand uh, on their sites, they they tend to keep it up there all the time, right? So then it's obviously your job to keep them promoting you in better ways across their platforms or their audience. But but they never switch you off. So as long as you can get them on and, and putting your brand on the on that site, then 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 that's it. Then it's your job to just basically get more out of them. And and, and so it's it's very different. It works in very different ways, but really good, really good that, channel. That's that's the trick, though. What you said there is it's, it's getting them on, isn't it? Because some affiliates are better than others, and obviously you've got your super affiliates that are earning thousands, tens of thousands of pounds a month just for running content mm -hmm. and ads on their website for other people. It's how do you get in front yeah. of those super affiliates that are going to make you a lot of money? What is it that they're looking for in a business that means they're going to promote you over someone else? So, so how would you do that? Yeah, yeah see, so, so, so um, I'll get on to what I do now, but it's exactly what um, affiliate marketing management is all about, right? Because you have got all of these different partners out there. You've got... Um, when you, when you talk about partners on a on a uh, consumer facing partners, you've got like cashback and reward sites, right? So in the UK, you you know you've got Top Cashback, Quidco, um, and they're all promoting thousands of brands, right? So if you're going to partner with these guys who have millions of visitors per month, like you said, how do you how do you get in, how do you get on that homepage, or how do you get in front of your audience that you want to get into? And that's the trick. That's the management part. Um, to know how to be able to do that and, and get the brands that you manage uh, in front of the audience through these types of sites. But there's there's thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of different partners that you potentially could work with, right? Depending on what you're selling, what your business is. I mentioned cashback and loyalty. Um, I'm sure most most people when they're when they're shopping perhaps are looking for some extra value or a discount of some sort. So they might go into Google and they'll be like, I, you know, I want to shop at Boots. Uh, let me look, see if there's a Boots discount, discount coupon or something or, you know, a voucher code. So I'll go into Google and they'll search for that and they'll probably see, you know, loads of results of websites that are promoting discount codes uh, for all these different brands. And that's another type of partnership, right? So um, if you've got loads of promotions on your website um, and you want people to know about those promotions that aren't already on the website, then that's a really good tool to, uh, or a diff type of partnership that you can utilize to get those offers in front of people as well. Um, there's 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 social media, there's community blogs, forums. Um, you might be a you, you might be like a an Adidas or something, for example, right? So um, selling footwear. So that's where, where that's where content and I guess influencers become a bit more powerful because you can say to them, look, I'm going to give you these. These these new trainers that have just come out. I want you to talk about them. Here's the special features. Um, make make a content piece. It could be video, it could be written, um, and here's your link. So basically, you know, here's here's some money to to put the content together, and we'll give you a link so that everyone that does click on your links, you're going to get a commission on that on that sale. That's probably a really good example of, um, of monetizing content, right? Using affiliate uh, marketing to be able to do that. And of course, I think people listening will know probably the most famous affiliates are like um, Compare the Market and Confusion. Yeah, exactly. And Go Compare. They are affiliates because yeah. they're getting commission just... on everybody that goes through and buys from Direct, well, not Direct Line or Admiral or whatever insurance company it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. It's like an evolution of what was happening before. So it might have been like telesales or it might have been people phoning up. Um, I want to get insurance for my car. Um, you know, here's all my details. Give me, give me some quotes, and then they'll give you a quote, and then you'll say, "Well, I want that one." Uh, so they then, you know, they complete that sale over the phone, and then they will receive commission on that on that sale. So it's it's the same model, but it's just all digital, all online, and all automated as well. Because um, that's the thing. Like, you, as a consumer who's 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 just shopping normally online and going through these different channels, doing their research, doing some price comparison, um, you know, all, all this kind of, all this kind of behavior, the things that are happening on behind the scenes, right? All the redirects and the links, and you just don't see that because it's all milliseconds that, you know, yeah. links are going everywhere and recording stuff and 
all that kind of stuff. And, and, and affiliate marketing is part of that because it needs to be able to track uh, you as a customer, nothing personal. I mean, you're just a number, right? But you as a <laughs> customer to make a sale, mm. uh, to be able to reward you, uh, the, the, the publisher for that sale, to know that they directed that customer in the first place. And so, so a lot, a lot so of times. Yeah. As as you've mentioned tracking, I think that, that that's important as well because I've, I've been an affiliate for a long time. I don't do as much of it now. It's a bit more passive. But one of the things mm -hmm. that was important as an affiliate was how it was tracked and the length of the tracking because some companies, let's say B&Q, for example, they might have an affiliate scheme. They might be on something like Commission Junction or Affiliate Window. I don't even know if they're still going right now. And they might have a 30-day a cookie tracker or they might have a seven-day mm -hmm. cookie or a one-day cookie. And that means, obviously, if somebody clicks through to it, if it's a one-day cookie, they've got one day to make that purchase for you to get commission on it. If it's outside mm -hmm. that one day, you don't get the commission. Whereas Amazon, correct me if I'm wrong, you probably know better than I do, I believe Amazon is session-based. So if you click through to Amazon via a link, yeah. shut the browser down, open it back up, five seconds later, yeah. you don't get the commission. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think that is the case. I'm not 100% sure about Amazon, but I, I know, like, for example, Booking.com, they're session-based. So, oh, you know, you, the, the customer clicks. Yeah, <laughs> that's to make the purchase. But the thing is as well, um, like, uh, we, we, we've done the analysis with a couple of clients because we get all the data anyway. And, and like, for a low-consideration purchase, over 90% of the traffic that converts, that comes in and converts, is within session anyway, so there's a purchase within two hours. Um, so it's not, it's not necessarily a, a big thing because mm. uh, if it was, it would be raised at a time. Like we we say when we launch clients, um, I'm kind of jumping the gun, but when we launch clients, we, we say to them, look, put yourself on a 30-day cookie because it looks good and, and the affiliate's going to want to promote you over someone that's only giving seven days. However, we probably know that the data shows that it's not going to make any difference, really. Oh, so from an advertiser's point of view, setting a 30-day cookie doesn't matter. You're not going to end up paying out any more commissions, really, by doing that. It just makes you more attractive. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, okay. it, it depends. It depends on the... Um, on, on how... Uh, high consideration the purchase is mm. so like if it's you know if it's something that you're just um i don't know something like th that's low value and you just go there and you buy something it could be like a t-shirt or something like that you know i yeah. want a white t-shirt okay bang you're gonna buy it but if you're you know if you're booking if you're booking a holiday or something or a hotel and you want to be within that country or something like that or where you want to be in a city you're going to do a lot of research. You're going to keep going and coming back before you make the purchase. So it's higher consideration. Um, so uh, it all depends. But but generally, generally speaking, it, mm -hmm. most purchases happen within the session, really. And you, you, you've you mentioned what you do now. Yeah. So obviously, you left game in 2005. Now you're not even in the UK, are yeah. you? Because I'll tell you now, no. the day, the day yeah. we're recording this, mate, it's, what, 18th of January, and it is absolutely freezing. It's like the coldest day in the UK on record yeah. for January. So where are you? No, like, yeah. Where are you? So I'm in, I'm in Thailand now, and I have been for coming up to nine years now, actually. Nice. Um, so it's, 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 been, it's been an interesting journey. I can probably try and give a shortened version of what happened after the game. Um, because that's obviously part of the journey of how I ended up here. Um, I did actually, after after I left game, uh, I went. I just went on a travelling trip to Thailand for nine months. Um, funny enough, I booked, I intended to book 12 months, um, but my fl the flight that I booked, I got the dates wrong and they wouldn't change it, so I ended up with <laughs> nine months in the end. Um, <laughs> but basically, I was just travelling around um, and, and taking a bit of a break and, like, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I started a game and I still wasn't sure, but I picked up some really good experience on the way. So I think I just needed to fine tune what I wanted to do and give some time to think about it. So I saved up a little bit and I was like, right, let's take a break. Um, but yeah, two weeks before I was due to come back, I ended up getting work in Thailand, in Phuket, uh, working for an eBay power seller, actually, as it goes. Um, 
bizarre products they were selling i would say um but they were they were like um gothic kind of dresses for women mainly based in the us um and they were manufactured in india they had the office in thailand and it was, it was a strange setup um and and i did that i did that sort of for about i think it was about nine ten months um and then i came back and this is where it, it got quite interesting because um i was speaking to quite a few companies about about working and i ended up getting a job at a company called rakuten uh well at the time it was called Linkshare, but then it evolved into Rakuten because that's the company that purchased Linkshare. Now Rakuten are, you know, like kind of this global powerhouse, but especially big in in Japan. Mm. I think their their brand awareness is ridiculous. Um, it's like a McDonald's, I guess, in um, uh, or a Coca Cola in in Japan, and they've got yeah, a whole ecosystem in Japan. They're sponsors of Barcelona FC as well. Yeah, and uh, I'll get back to that actually uh, because oh. <laughs> uh, that was that was um, that was that was interesting at the time when I was working at Rakuten. But so 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 the division that I worked in was Rakuten Marketing, and within that they did a few different things. But part of it was they had an affiliate marketing network. Uh, so if you think of Commission Junction, you mentioned affiliate window. The other one was Rakuten, and that's who I worked with uh, as a client-facing account manager. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, massive company, like I said, they've got all these business pillars. They, 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 they do travel, they do finance. Um, basically in Japan, you, you will touch Rakuten in multiple ways just by living your life, right? So you, if you need finance, you go through Rakuten. If you want to travel, you go through Rakuten Travel. If you want to shop for any goods, then you go through the Rakuten Marketplace. So, um, it's it's massive and, and and they did a lot of work to try and expand globally and some of it successful some of it not so much um but anyway so 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 that was the that was the affiliate network that i worked with client facing account manager i got some accounts straight away i think my first account was charles tirrett which is a shirt making company um they got a few branches around london and, and stuff as well um but yeah no a variety and kind of worked my way up the, the the company as I as I re as I really got to know affiliate marketing and 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 understanding what it takes to grow a program right for an advertiser uh, where will the partnerships come from what are the type of partnerships um, and then um, and then spent spent eight years more or less exactly eight years there and and uh, by the time I left I was responsible for I think there was about 90, 90 clients that were that we were giving like a full service uh level to because there was different levels of service there was like mm -hmm. self-managed and then there was like a little bit of management and there was full service for some of the bigger clients but so i think i had under my wing about 40 something clients and then obviously a team that was managing that as well so um this was an amazing experience for me because i got to know the industry massively um with a really good company and 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 also built my kind of management skills as well and and knowing how to manage people and deal with all different types of um types of things that, that is associated with being a people manager as well so that was really good um but no going back to the barcelona thing so um i think this was about two years before before i moved on from racton we we heard rumors from the owner that he was looking to sponsor some kind of sporting sporting um uh, club but we didn't know where it was all hush hush and it was all rumors but what 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 we were hoping for is that they were gonna they're gonna sponsor like somewhere in london right chelsea or you know because same as you i'm 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 a liverpool uh supporter i guess um i i, I don't go to the games and stuff like that they're my favorite team um mm. and have been since you know since the beginning but so I, but, but i had to kind of like drop that and think you know what if these guys can sponsor a Chelsea or a Tottenham, we get to take our clients to these, you know, bo a box or boxes or whatever, you know, was going to be involved um, on a regular basis and really, really give our clients a good time and, and have a great time at the matches as well. Um, that didn't happen. And then obviously I moved on and I think they, they did some kind of deal with F within F1, I think, for a while. Oh, were they as well? And then it got announced, I think, that they I think so, yeah. Um, or that was a rumor. I can't remember. That could have been the rumor. Um, it was quite a while ago now. 
but obviously yeah then the barcelona thing uh mm. happened i was like damn it <laughs> i left too soon should have should have uh, could have talked myself into going over to barcelona for some you know client meetings and stuff and and get into the bernabal oh. uh the, the camp nou camp nou sorry yeah. bernabal yeah. is real madrid is real madrid see real madrid uh, so you, you you wouldn't have been a, you wouldn't have been welcome at Barcelona saying oh this this is the I know, I know. <laughs> they'd be throwing sticks and all sorts at me yeah they wouldn't have um, that <laughs> so so yeah so so I I, I basically I, I left so I got to a point where I was I, I was more senior in the company um, I wasn't learning as much as I wanted to learn I thought you know what well, this is this is the time for a change so um, I was like rather than a small change let's just go full full force. So I was like, right. Um, I said to my wife, I'm, I'm leaving the company, and we're going to move to probably Bangkok. I'm doing some research now, uh, and she was like, okay, but I'm really happy here. Um, why do we have to move? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm going to figure something out when we get there. <laughs> so, so that's what we did. We came over, uh, and then I was, she was okay at with this. Options. She was okay with this. Uh, I still don't know the full answer to that yet. I, 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 I say yes, but there was probably a, a, not really, not really, but, but I'll come along anyway and support you. So kudos, kudos to her for that. Mm. Um, so, but, but anyway, so I started doing some research and, and obviously affiliate marketing was now, you know, what, what I, what I've worked in for a long time. So I was looking for opportunities there and going back to like quidco and the top cashback and and that model where consumers can basically get get paid to shop essentially right so i'd recommend anyone who's listening if if they're not already a member of top cashback or quidco or any any similar site in the uk to join up because it's free and and you know i think i i think i got about a thousand pounds in the end like of basically free money and when i say free money what happens is you go on to top cashback and you decide that you want to book a hotel, right? Let's say you're going to Paris for the weekend. So you look up booking.com on top cashback. You then click through uh, to the booking.com, uh, shop as normal, make your purchase. Then that gets tracked back to top cashback. And when you're on that website on top cashback, you'll, you'll be able to see all the, all the, uh, uh, all the cashback amounts that you can get per store. So let's say the booking give them 5% cashback. What that means is that whatever you spend, whatever you pay on booking.com, you're going to get 5% back uh, through this website, which will be redeemable in like a couple of months. And then you just get it transferred straight into your bank account. Um, so it's completely free to join them. Um, but what happens in the background is obviously top cashback have referred, if you're shopping, right, have referred you as a customer You've made the purchase. Top cashback. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. So, top cashback. Maybe they get seven percent. Maybe they get five. Maybe they get ten. But what they do is they keep a little bit for themselves potentially, and then they pass on the rest mm. as a reward to their members. So they've got they've got a revenue stream as well. So everyone wins. It's like a win-win, complete win-win. So I was like, this is a really good model, and no one's doing this in Thailand. Um, so within three months, I'd, I basically got a template, uh, cashback engine. I think that's actually what it was called. It's branded as, um, got it, got it redesigned slightly. Um, and then just launched it. Cause I, I knew, I knew what I needed to do to get, uh, advertisers on board. Right. Because I knew there's all the affiliate networks. I worked for one. I know, I know what the process is. So within within three months, I had I think about two hundred and fifty stores on the cashback site, and this was just me just putting it together and you know um, getting things up and running. So um, yeah, so I, I was busy. I, um, more or less, I couldn't. It was. I tell you what. What was really difficult was because from day one, I was looking for uh, obviously investment to get to try and get moving quicker, and that was a really tough process. Again, I'd never done that before. So I, I joined a company that offered what's called an incubator uh, program. I don't know if you know. I guess you do, right? Like kind no, of a, no, I'm a, not familiar uh, with it, no. Okay, so um, if you're running a startup, there's options to allow you to access support or, and or funding. 
as a as an entrepreneur. Hmm. Um, and one of those options is what's called an, uh, an incubator. So it's basically a company that you sign up with, and they'll give you they'll give you support. So they'll they'll uh, help you to understand the the legal processes, how to how to scale on a limited budget. All, all of that knowledge in terms of how to grow your startup company to make, make it something big and also how to become appealing to potential investors. So how to say the right things, uh, how to how to present in the right way, all that kind of stuff. So you can sign up and you either pay a fee or they will take a small equity chunk um, for their services or whatever it might be. So so I joined them and, and, and got some guidance from them on, on a few bits and pieces. But yeah, getting getting investment was was a really tough, was a really tough gig. <laughs> I don't, you haven't done it before, I guess. But anyone no, that no, has done it knows that. No, we 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 started yeah. engage web with a hundred quid. Yeah, so. yeah, the best way, the best way I found now, right? So so I got in. This was another this this was another thing that I'd never done before that I'd suddenly learn and didn't realise how much I'd learn. You know, because you never do while you're in that you in the in the zone, right? But when yeah. you come out of it and you look back, you go, oh my God. Uh, look at this! Look what was going on. So, uh, so I was kind of plodding along, trying to get investment, um, and then there was another, there was another um, similar website, uh, a company called Rebate Mango, right? Um, and they were already live in four countries, and and they offered to the consumer, to the met, to their members, they offered cash back uh, as a standard payout, but they also offered points as well um for certain telecoms companies and hmm. and companies that offer you know food shopping taxi food delivery um or you could actually they set up a uh, the ability for you to 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 um donate your cash backs whatever you earn to a to a charity which is like a hmm. dog sanctuary sanctuary based in Phuket yeah. um or you could get air miles um if you're a member of I think it's um, uh, so. So, if if you're a member of the Singapore Airlines or the Malaysia Airlines, um, you know, air miles programs, you could basically get air miles every time you shopped online. So you build up your air miles on that. Um, so, uh, so I, I got talking with the one of the co-founders and said, "Look, this is me. I'm looking to scale up, but actually, I'm looking to potentially join another company." And he was looking to scale up a bit more in Thailand as well, because he was in Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam, and just launched in Philippines. Uh, not Vietnam, sorry, uh, Malaysia. And um, and we got talking, and, and and kind of the objectives of what we wanted to do matched. So we ended up joining up, um, and then um, building building Rebate Manga and just growing growing those guys as well. And this is where it got um, like like you said. I think you t- we were talking before um, the, um, the the AI thing, right? Is a is yeah. a threat, but it can also be an opportunity. Um, so, so COVID happened, right? So, what happened just before COVID was we were we were we were almost at signing stage to receive a, a seed fund, right? I think it's about I think it's about a million dollars um, to to then extend you know extend what we wanted to do. Um, and then and then the covid thing started snowballing and then the investors were like let's just wait a couple of months let this blow over and then um and then let's get back at, let's get back at the table and then we'll you know we'll sign the funding anything was covid was in a couple of months right mm-hmm. uh, it, it lasts a little longer than that um so <laughs> so so what happened was that didn't happen and not only that um, like I said, a lot of the members could use the use our platform to to get air miles on their on their uh, on their reward um, their air miles cards and etc. Right. So all of the travel stopped. So they stopped shopping uh, completely, and and so the revenue that we that we were getting through that sector of our member base just dropped to the floor. Um, and obviously, we didn't get the funding either. So we had to make some real drastic changes. We had to turn into like a skeleton operation where it was just a few of us, uh, like the senior management, kind of just all, you know, getting stuck in and, and keeping things going. We did a couple of like B2B deals where we would white label 
our platform um, and um, give it to a I think Malaysia Airlines was was one that basically took our platform and it allowed their members to just go and shop and earn the air miles directly through their portal. So we did that and that, and that, that was a monthly fee thing. So that was bringing in a little bit of revenue. But um, I've said this a few times, what me and uh, the co-founder of Rebate Mango, we could basically, we could see it, we could see this iceberg right in front of us and it was coming mm-hmm. towards us and, and you lock on a ship and you can't, you can't turn left or right. You just know it's coming. So we're like, look, this thing's happening. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna end well. We need to think about what to do next. So um, everyone had the same thoughts. You know, we, we've got to shut this down and, and decide what what to do next. So everyone kind of went their own ways. And then um, myself and uh, his name is Jesper, who was the co-founder of uh, Rebate Mango. We were like, well, what can we do? Um, so long story short, we're both based here. We were looking at the affiliate landscape across Southeast Asia and we're like, where's the gap? And and what we found was the gap is no one knows how to manage or grow affiliate channel, the affiliate channel here. Like we, there's a couple of like agencies, not specialists, just a, general agencies trying to hold the fort. And even the brands themselves were were new, just like I was when it came to PPC mm. back in 2002. I didn't I didn't know what to do at the time. It was an, it was a new channel for me, completely new. So we're like, well, you know, by that time, I was like, well, I've got like 20 years experience in this channel. Um, Jesper has got like, it, at the time it was like 12 plus years running um, running a, and growing an affiliate program or the affiliate channel, should I say, for uh, a brand that's part of Priceline, which is booking.com and all the, and what the other brand he worked for was Agoda. Um, so we're like, well, we can probably set something up and we know what we're doing. We know how to grow a program. We know how to get partners for the advertisers. We know how to, you know, we basically know. So we're like, well, let's set this up. But before we do that, let's have a couple of conversations. Because what we thought was, because e-commerce is growing really quickly here, and it was especially during COVID. Um, and what, what we thought basically was there's going to be companies based in the UK, based in Europe, Australia, US, that want a piece of this Southeast Asia um, e-commerce market so we think that we can probably pitch to them and and say to them look we're gonna we're gonna grow this channel for you in this region so that was one aim and then and then maybe we can get some smes here in the region right just grow our reputation build build out our client base and then start going for the big guys but the first conversation we had was with uh with a, an affiliate platform uh that basically called us up and said, look, we've got this global brand that we need help in with Thailand. Are you interested? We're like, well, who is it? And they said, oh, it's a company called Lenovo. And we're like, uh, yeah, we, we, we're interested. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take that on. Um, so, so that was our first client was Lenovo. And we're like, hold on. And then all these other brand, big brands started coming on board, like Allianz Insurance, right? Um, and FWD, which is a another finance company that's, massive in this region and we're having other conversations with a lot of different brands um so so what's actually happened is that that it's it's the big brands that haven't got the resource or the time or they haven't got the support to really grow the programs so we've come and like we've come and really filled uh, a gap that was there in this in this region so the demand for our help is is increasing all the time so we're in we're in quite a good position at the moment um to to help some smaller some bigger brands but you know we've got um we've got a good we've got a small we've got a small dedicated team so we've got a headquarters in um i could probably just talk about that in a bit but we're because mm. we're based in thailand but um yeah we've got clients like puma for example that we're managing in five countries at the moment um kaspersky is another one that we manage in seven countries across southeast asia so we've had to like build because the thing is in in this region um, it's not like launching programs in Europe, like France, Germany, Nordics, because they, they all kind of follow culturally and language wise. Generally, they all follow the same pattern. So they, you can repeat a lot of the activity and what you do and how you do it here. This is the, the, the main biggest difference is that every country is so different from each other, whether it's the language or it's the culture, way of doing business, 
the type of partnerships is so is so separate from each other that you can't have you can't necessarily have this unified approach you need you need that local touch uh yeah. for each of the countries so we 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 recognized that early on and we we kind of our intention was to bring on the right team that could help us support in different areas so you know we can support in countries like south korea now thailand obviously um uh, malaysia indonesia um you know and even taiwan and hong kong as well we've got this we've got the this, the mix of staff that can help support us in that so really for us um that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment as an agency it's just helping brands in this region to really really maximize their affiliate channel um and we're uh, and we're kind of getting more and more involved in the influencer marketing channel as well because that's obviously been around quite a while and it's that's evolving at the moment but the spend in that in that channel is is increasing year on year as well so it's become really important but i think brands are being more choosy on how they spend their money throughout throughout when when using influencers uh, it, whether it's... the really big one or the way to the small it, it, it's almost the way you say that and it's almost like things are going in in cycles because obviously back at game in the early 2000s we were spending huge amounts of money on display advertising on things like msn yeah. and then that sort yeah. of tailed off when we realized yeah. that actually the return's not there now people are spending huge amounts of money on influencer marketing but that's not necessarily bringing the return so people are being more choosy about that are you seeing patterns like that happening in affiliate marketing Generally, generally uh, in affiliate marketing, um, because uh, so so in affiliate marketing, not really. We, we we're just seeing new models appear, okay. Um, but now, what? So the way that we position ourselves is that we're like, and this is the evolution of terms, right? Um, we're we're a partner marketing agency now, so we've got this partner marketing umbrella, and underneath that is mm. affiliate marketing as a channel influencer marketing there's the business to business um channel we call it and brand to brand channel so that's where two brands team up together and do a reciprocal um partnership to tap into each other's audiences right, right. uh the business channel is where we uh speak to let's say some of the some of the banks um like in in this region i mean and every bank has like a little uh, section for their for their customers to go in and get exclusive offers and things like that, like member deals or whatever. So, so what we do is we, we we try and get our brands promoted within that section as well. So that works in a slightly different way. Obviously, influencer marketing uh, is a is a channel in itself. Even though it, the the line between influencer and affiliate is kind of blurring a little bit, so they're kind of mm. overlapping now as well. I'd say that's an evolution rather than a cycle. I think affiliate marketing is just constant evolution. Um, and then, uh, but but what changes, like you said, because that's a good point, is that the way that you work within those channels will change. So, um, like, when when brands decide, you know, in, en masse that they want, they don't just want to use influencer for, like, like brand awareness only without people buying anything because at the end of the day if you're if your brand you want to sell stuff okay there's value in 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 the branding part but at the end of the day you want to be able to follow that person and make sure as many of those will make a purchase uh, as possible so now what's happened is and again evolution i guess is that whereas before you you talk to an influencer or an agency that manages influencers and they say and you run a campaign and you pay hundreds of dollars or whatever and they say um this this guy promoted you or this lady promoted you and and you got you got a thousand rate uh and and there was four shares so there you go there's that that's that's your results of what you got <laughs> but they they can only track stuff and they can only measure those results on the social media platform so what's happened now is that uh, a lot of these affiliate tech companies, platforms, either through acquisition or building their own tech, are able to now uh, measure the full what we call the full funnel, right? So the impression, the the engagement, all the, I call them the fluffy metrics, right? That's the fluffy <laughs> stuff. 
the fluffy that, stuff. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that, that, that if you if if you're all about driving sales, that's fluffy. Um, so now they 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 have, they measure all these metrics all the way down to the click, the conversion, the sale, and some of them even post sale, right? So lifetime value of a customer. So you've got this full funnel tracking now, and that's that's going to drive the evolution of influence marketing because advertisers now will actually see the real value of what they're doing and the activity they're doing. Like, what does it result in rather than just the fluffy stuff? Like, what does it result in further down the line? And and should I be paying this much for that, or, or should I be changing the model in how I work with influencers? So that's that's and that's that's happening globally. I think so. It's not just not just here. I think it will be led by the US and and UK mainly. I think. That, so, that is, yeah, it's good to see. Actually, that's good to see because there, there's a lot of people in our industry in, in SEO that just focus on rankings. You know, where you're ranking mm-hmm. in Google for a particular keyword. Look, aren't you doing well? Yes, but how many yeah. people are searching for that? How many people are yeah. clicking through to the website? And when they go through to the website, yeah. how many people are actually buying or inquiring? Or are those inquiries worth anything? Are they turning into customers? And at the end of the day, it's the money you make in your business. And as you say, the lifetime value of the customer, even more important, mm-hmm. rather than that fluffy mm-hmm. metric of where do you rank for a particular <laughs> keyword? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so... Um... You know, now I think as tech as tech evolves, it, it it gives it gives more visibility and information for the for the brands to make more informed decisions on how they're spending their marketing budget. So it's good. I think it's good overall. Um, it's, it's so yeah. Anyway, I was going to say. It's, it's I was just going to say about about the, the the change in the way things move. Because back when yeah. we were at Game, I, I was a, a Commission Junction affiliate. I think before I started at Game. And I was earning right. very, very easy money, something like three, four hundred dollars a month for doing absolutely nothing, because eBay yeah. back then paid you fifty cents for every person that clicked through and signed up for an eBay account. And I thought I was yeah. going to be earning that money for the rest of time, three, four hundred dollars a month for doing absolutely nothing. But as it turns out, everybody's got an eBay account now, so they don't need to pay that for sign-ups. <laughs> So you, things yeah. change, don't they? Things evolve. Yeah. So just because you're yeah. on a particular network earning money doesn't mean you're going to mm. be earning it next month or next year. You always have to keep an eye on what's going to happen next, how the market's going to change, yeah. how affiliate marketing's going to change. And it's the same. It's it's that it's that cheesy saying, right? Adapt or die. But it still mm. it runs through everything, like every every kind of business or vertical. It's like things. Things constantly change. You just need to be able to adapt, and um, you know, not not be stuck in in, in the way of or doing one particular thing in a particular way because you get left behind. Um, especially if it's a tech driven vertical industry, whatever. You know, things just move so fast now as well, and AI will accelerate that as well. Yeah. Um, so um, people need to look for opportunities in 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 that threat that development of of ai i think to to help them to to do something better than, mm. than what they're doing as as we we're, we're almost out of time now Ant. so oh, as okay. as a as a final thing um what sort of businesses are you looking for to work with and what's the best way for them to to get in touch with you so um so well, the company name is here right so it's load start marketing um, we we work with brands from all different verticals. We work with uh, finance companies. Um, we work with uh, retail companies. You know whether it's fashion, health and beauty, electronics, travel as well. We we support uh, travel clients as well. So any basically any company that sells something online and has an e-commerce capability right on on their site or their app, um, who's interested in you know driving a lot more sales through um through affiliate marketing is you know is we're happy to speak to and, and for them to understand because it can drive up to 20 percent of the e-commerce sales for for a business so it's 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 an important channel uh that everyone needs to be you know have in their portfolio or marketing channels absolutely and is that purely in asia or are you doing this across the world now as well so we we focus on uh apac region so southeast asia um but we support in other countries when needed so um like south korea is an example where we we now support 
So we're looking at what countries could be next that we could support, but primarily Southeast Asia because there was no one really doing this type of support at the moment. Um, so that's our core focus right now. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure cool. catching up. Yeah, it has. It has been. It's been too long. Um, maybe when I'm in the UK, we'll, uh, you'll, you'll be your base miles away now, aren't you? But up north somewhere. <laughs> My, miles. Chester, <laughs> You're in bloody Thailand, and you're saying I'm miles away from. I know, I know, but hey, yeah, when yeah. I come over, it should be London. That's why. Well, Chester, well I'm, well, I'm a Liverpool season ticket holder as well. I've got hospitality tickets at Anfield. Oh, okay, okay, that's that's incentive enough. That's incentive I'll be, enough I'll, to to get north, I'll is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So right. finally, you you can go into hospitality at a Premier League ground, even yeah. though you didn't end up sponsoring Chelsea or yeah. Tottenham. I know. Excellent. Yeah. Good right, stuff. You. Good stuff. Thank you, Tom.